Hi, my name is Lila and I'm the Mini Witch. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This week's video is about building a fountain terrain piece from a stamp I found at the thrift store, including utilizing resin water, creating water effects, painting a bronze statue, weathering, and more. This video is a collaboration between myself and several other YouTubers you can see here. I highly recommend checking out all of them. The collaboration this month was to find an element from the thrift store for under $5 and upcycle it related to mini painting. So let's get into this. Planning. After hours of digging through bins at the thrift store, I finally came upon this stamp here. It's a Celtic-esque stamp on a large acrylic square base. I had been wanting to use resin for quite a while and this seemed like the perfect opportunity to utilize it. The plan was to use the stamp as the base and use a tea-like casing as the first bowl of my water fountain, as well as this miniature here from Reaper Miniatures. This miniature had been sitting in the back of my miniature drawer for quite a while and it seemed perfect for this project. Prep and painting. The base. First, I removed the sticker that was attached to this acrylic base piece that also included the foam stamp. Then I cut away the sticker and replaced the foam stamp directly onto the acrylic base, utilizing the stickiness that was already there. Then I primed the base and the stamp. Using a penny as a stencil, I drew a circle on a piece of pink foam core and then carefully cut it out using my X-Acto blade. Unfortunately, it didn't go very well and I wasn't able to cut a really smooth circle. So using a file and sandpaper, I rounded down the edges until I was happy with how it all looked. Next was gluing the tea light and the foam pedestal to my base. I used hot glue and then applied my primer. Tea light was incredibly fragile, which I was not expecting. So I had to be very careful in gluing and painting this element. To get the stone texture, I created a mixture of baking soda, glue, and water, and applied that to my base. This is going to give it a rough stony texture. Since I didn't want to hand paint in bricks or hand cut and carve in bricks, I wanted to do something else to give the piece some visual interest. I also applied extra layers of this mixture to where the candle case and the acrylic base met so that it looked like more like one piece. As you can see, the glue began to peel off the sides of the acrylic base, so I mix up a new mixture of white glue, baking soda water, as well as slow drying super glue, and then applied that back over the areas that had began to peel up. I then painted this with a very thin down tan by Reaper and a dollop of black ink from Scale 75 Intensity Set. The baking soda absorbs water incredibly quickly, so you need to be sure to thin down your paint appropriately. I used my dome brush so I could use a padding stippling motion instead of strokes. After the base was fully covered, it was time to add visual interest and age. I started by applying Agrax Earthshade with a touch of black ink to the base using my domed brush, then moving on to mixing different colors on my wet palette and stamping them on with a scrunched up paper towel. Using paper towel was a really great way to do this because it created very natural and organic shapes and since I could easily reform the paper towel, there was not an easily identifiable pattern through my mixture. I also liked using this technique because if I felt like I messed up, I could very easily go back in with lighter or darker paint until I got it exactly to the color that I wanted it. I did quite a number of layers, switching between light and dark until I got the aged and worn color I was after. After this, all of the details in my stamp got lost. I began by dry brushing my stamp to highlight the raised edges and then took some thin down black ink and carefully painted in those little details. 
Of course, at this time, I didn't know that I was going to be putting resin over all of this, and so it wasn't going to matter nearly as much as the amount of time that I put into this, but I do think that at least lining these elements did help it pop out better under the water. Then the more I looked at this piece, the more I didn't like it. Several people told me that I needed to encircle the stamp and make that a bowl as well on my fountain, but I just didn't want to because I didn't want to. But in the end, I ended up doing it anyway, but I'm very pleased that I did. I found a piece of heavy cardstock and cut out a long strip. I chose cardstock because it was going to bend easily to match my stamp and hopefully would be strong enough to hold in my resin so I wasn't going to have to worry about resin leaking out over my base. Starting at the back of my statue, I super glued the long strip of cardboard to the back side and then carefully folded it along each corner, super gluing it at each point along the way. I also added a good deal of super glue to the edges, again to help seal those in so the resin didn't escape. Once it was dry, I mixed a similar concoction of water, baking soda, and white glue, as well as paint, and used that and applied it over my base color. I also applied a thick layer of this mixture between the cardstock and my base, like I did with the super glue, to better seal in that area. Mixing the paint directly in with this mixture didn't have any negative effects, so I'm definitely going to be doing it this way in the future. Next was adding algae and weathering. If the water is allowed to drip in the same area, there tend to be these black drip marks over time. So I thinned down some black ink and then carefully and delicately applied those black drip marks down both rings of my fountain. Attempt one of algae was just to take green paint and apply it to the fountain. However, it looked too painted. So instead, I mixed up a bit of green with baking soda and then applied that over my previously painted areas. This texture really helped make the algae look realistic. Next, I went to Instagram and asked my followers what they thought of my piece. I got several good suggestions, but the one that really stood out was from Always Be Painting, who suggested that I added coins to my water fountain. I really love this idea because it added story and character to my water fountain, so that's what I decided to do. The coins were made by taking green stuff and rolling them into tiny balls, then dampening the end of my handle of my X-Acto blade and pushing down on those green balls. It was very important that the balls were perfectly round, otherwise the pieces ended up to be oval or oblong and uneven. I glued my coins into the water fountain and painted them with my gold paint. Of course, you can't really see that because my head's in the way, so sorry about that. I then also added black lining as well as edge highlighting. Then I thought I was done, but I was wrong. After basically completing this whole project, I realized that it was missing something. And I realized that it was missing that top ring that the top bowl of my water fountain had. Obviously, the answer was to add a ring. Completion be damned. I took a piece of wire and roughly measured it around the bottom bowl of my fountain and then cut what I thought I would need, adding an extra inch just in case. Of course, I still ended up running short, but so maybe cut an extra two inches. I attempted to shape the wire to my fountain, but it was quite difficult to do, especially using only my hands. If you have needle nose pliers, I'm sure this would be a far easier task for you. Once I got the wire to a spot that I thought was close, I secured the wire by using resin. I used this material because I wanted the wire to better blend in with the fountain and look more like a unified piece and less like I had just glued a wire to the top of some cardstock. Then I recreated my texture using my usual baking soda mixture, applied my paint, and then once again added my weathering. The miniature. 
The first thing I did was remove the miniature from the base. Using a box cutter, I carefully cut the miniature from different angles until it flew off the base. If you're going to do this, be sure that you are careful and cut away from your fingers. Then I applied my primer. Unfortunately, the primer revealed a lot of mold lines and I had to go back in and remove them. I attempted to do so with my file, but the rough file pulled up the soft plastic. So I had to go in with my X-Acto blade and then smooth down those rough edges with a finer sandpaper. Hi, kitten bun. Are you coming to work today? Cardamom is the definition of scaredy cat. Honey, nothing even happened. Wow, good job. Wow. You went the whole time without panicking. Good job. What is my life? Then I reapplied my primer with my airbrush. Next, I did research on how to paint old bronze statues. Though I looked at several resources and tutorials, the best one I found was by Black Magic Crack, which you can find here, but I'll go ahead and reiterate it here. I painted my statue with two layers of bronze craft paint. The first was a darker mix of bronze with a touch of black to create a darker, more opaque base color. The second layer was painted with straight bronze. Then I applied a black wash. Once it was dry, I applied a layer of sealant. Next, I created a wash of teal paint to recreate the patina. I created my mixture using a vibrant green and a vibrant teal and mixed them together in a paper cup. I then added a bit of water. Then I applied airbrush thinner. Though, according to Black Magic Craft, you can also use dish soap, but airbrush thinner was closer. Supposedly, the soapy texture helps the paint slide into the recesses. Then I tested the mix on the back of my hand. I wasn't sure what I was looking for, but I wanted to start softer and add more layers later if I needed. I applied this wash very heavily, using a brush to absorb some extra from the faces because I didn't want them to get too obscured by the patina. Now, Black Magic Craft noticed on his tutorial that this texture seemed to build up from the interaction of the black wash and the teal patina mixture. He hypothesized that adding a sealant in between these two steps would hopefully stop this interaction. Unfortunately, I tried it that way and that's not what happened, but it just adds more character and texture to my statue. Taking the same bronze color, I then dry brush over the raised edges to once again pull them to the forefront of the statue. Though I could have called it done at this point, that just really isn't my style. Is it perfect? No. Do I have time to work on it? No. Better fix it. I mix up my bronze paint with a bit of gold and white and continue to layer in highlights like you would on any other miniature. I know it's a bit extra, especially when this is just a statue, but my water effects are so interesting that I really wanted to take a little bit of time and try to bring the statue up to the same level as the water. we were on to use in resin. And before I go over my experience, let me start with the fact that I am a doer and not an instruction reader. If I think that I can wing something, I probably will. This was my first time using resin and you can tell, but everyone has to start somewhere. This is UV resin from Green Stuff World, which I really like. I watched the Green Stuff World promo video as well as sped through a few other tutorials and watched it enough that I felt confident enough in myself to just go ahead and do it. Most importantly, I read the instructions and it didn't say anything about layer thickness or anything like that, but it did say about adding inks to color your liquid. And I decided to focus on that 
because that sounded really cool and I just went ahead and did it. I added a bunch of resin to a cup and then added a single drop of blue ink and a single drop of green ink. And let me tell you, that was three drops too many. I added more resin in an attempt to dilute the ink and really it was just too intense. But I said, close enough, wrong, incorrect. Do not do that. I should have followed my gut and just gone ahead and mix up a new batch of resin to a color that I was actually happy with. But I didn't want to waste the resin that I had already used. Instead, you should use just the tiniest dab of ink unless you really know what you're doing. Anyway, I mixed up my resin and began to pour it into my fountain. My intention was to pour it slowly, doing a single layer at a time. Well, that didn't work. I think I was expecting the resin to flow more like water and to wrap around the edges of my fountain, and it didn't do that. I kept waiting and waiting and ended up pouring way too much. Well, good thing the instructions didn't say anything about a specific thickness, because if it did, I would be in trouble right now. But then I saw what every resin user hates and fears, air bubbles. My first thought was to use a lighter, which I do not recommend if you're using paper. Second was a blow dryer, which also didn't work. Third, I just smacked it on the table, hoping to pop the air bubbles. In the end, I don't think any of these techniques actually worked. However, there was something happening just below the surface. I used the UV flashlight and hardened the resin, and that's when I saw what had happened. All of the resin had pulled to one side of the fountain as my desk is uneven. And since the resin is colored, it was incredibly obvious and way darker on one side of the miniature. And guess which side it was? It was the front, because of course it was the front. After a lot of swear words, I eventually decided that it was just time to move on and hopefully be able to cover my mistakes with my other water effects. So I actually created the water sprays twice. The first time I did it with thread and super glue and it just didn't look right. Eventually I came up with a system of trimming a length of fishing line, dipping that into resin and then holding it against a piece of cardboard until it started to curve. Once it was at a curve that I was happy with, I solidified it with my UV flashlight. The piece of line then stayed at that exact curve that I had created. I created several curves, each at varying degrees of length and curve intensity, and applied three spouts at each section. I then used resin and placed each spray into the water fountain. Next, I applied Woodlands Scenic Ripple Water Texture to the areas that would be affected by the water spray. I was also hoping that this would help hide the mistakes of my uneven blue resin. Applying the water texture was easy. All I did was take my brush, glob it where I wanted it, making sure to leave those upward brush strokes and then let it dry. Making sure to create a gradation of more intense ripples to less intense ripples as I moved away from each water spout. It was really all coming together, but it wasn't quite done yet. I had wanted to use Vallejo's gel wave texture, but unfortunately I couldn't find it in stock anywhere that was gonna get it to me in the timeline that I needed it. So I settled on the Woodland Scenic Ripple texture. Well, it did do exactly what it said it was going to do. It's just not what I wanted. I didn't feel like the water looked natural. I felt like there was this rather jarring gradation between the spray of water and then the ripple within the upper bowl of the fountain. I decided the best way to fix this was going to be to create splashes out of resin similar to how I created the water spray. So I did a very similar technique, cut my length of fishing line, dragged it through resin, and then held it upside down to a little bead developed on the edge of my string and then harden that with my UV flashlight. I created enough individual threads so that each splash would have three threads. Make sure you cut these threads shorter than you think that you're going to want them because leaving them too long makes them look very artificial. 
And finally, after adding in all of my water drops, I called it done. I have to say that even though this was a lot of work, I'm very happy with it. A lot of times I get really tired of my projects and I just want to put them down and be done with them, but that actually is not how I felt at the end of this one. Although I was very annoyed at myself for realizing at the very end of my project that I needed to add that wire around the bottom bowl of my fountain, overall I'm very happy with how everything went. I hope that this video has inspired you to try Green Stuff World's UV resin. I think it's great. I'm definitely going to play with it more and I have learned a lot. I also hope that this video has inspired you to go check out your local thrift store because you never know what you're going to find. You should also go and watch the other YouTubers who are participating in this collaboration. Again, here are their icons as well as their links to their YouTube videos will be in the description down below. The best way to support me is on Patreon. You can join my growing community, join my Discord, talk about miniatures, miniature projects, inspirations, as well as get feedback from me as well as other miniature painters. Otherwise, you can support me by purchasing literally anything you want from the Amazon links down in my description. It doesn't cost anything extra for you, it's just a little bit for me. You can also support me by following me on Instagram. I hope that you're having a wonderful day. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.